This is part 35 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to detect and react when an input property value changes using a property setter. This is continuation to part 34, so please watch part 34 before proceeding. In our previous video, we discussed how to detect and react when an input property value changes using the ng on changes lifecycle hook. In this video, we will discuss doing the same but using a property setter instead. This is the same application that we have been working with so far in this video series. Notice at the moment when I click this view next employee button, we cycle through the list of available employees and as the input property value is changing, we log the name of the previous employee and the current employee to the console. And at the moment, we are doing this using the ng on changes lifecycle hook. Now let's see how to do exactly the same thing but using a property setter instead. Since we are no longer going to use the onChanges lifecycle hook, let's delete the code related to it so the file is clean. Let's also remove onChanges from the import right here. Now let's include a private backing field for this input property. I'm going to name it underscore employee. The underscore here indicates that this is a private field and obviously the type for this is going to be employee. Now we are going to modify our input property to include a getter and a setter to read from and write into this private field. If you have any experience with object oriented programming languages like C sharp then this pattern should be very familiar to you. Now let's include a setter first. Let's leave the input decorator on its own line and move the rest of the code to the next line. To include a setter, we use the set keyword and let's name our setter employee, the same name as our input property. Now whenever we pass an employee object using this input property into this component, the setter will be called and the employee object will be passed into the setter as a parameter. So I'm going to name the parameter val and obviously we know the object that is coming into the setter is of type employee. So let's set the type of the parameter to employee. Now let's set this parameter val as the value for our private field underscore employee. So this dot underscore employee equals val. Let's format this code a bit. Save our changes and then take a quick look at the browser to see what we've got. Notice the employee details are not displayed and we've got a couple of errors. And look at what this error says. Cannot read property department of undefined. We know the department property is on the employee object but at the moment it's complaining employee object is undefined. That's because this template is not able to read from our input property. And the reason it's not able to read from the input property is because it doesn't have a getter. It only has a setter. Meaning we can only write into this property but we cannot read from it. So for the template to be able to read from our input property, we should include a getter. To include a getter for our input property, we use the get keyword. The name of the getter is the same as the setter which is employee and this getter is going to return an employee object. So the return type of the getter is employee and all this getter is going to do is return what we have in this private backing field underscore employee. So return this dot underscore employee. Notice now all the errors are gone and we are able to see the employee details. When we click this button we are able to see the next employee details. So every time we click this button the input property value is changing and when the input property value changes we want to detect that and log the previous employee name and the current employee name to the console just like how we did it with ng on changes. So every time the employee object is changed this setter of our input property is called. So here we write the code to intercept the input property value change. First let's log the previous employee name. To indicate that we are logging the previous employee name let's include this literal text previous and to this we want to append the previous employee name. Keep in mind first time previous employee is null so we have to check if 
there is null in our private backing field underscore employee. So if it is not null, then what do we want to do? We simply want to log what we have in our private backing field name property. If it is null, then we want to log the word null. Now all that is left is to log the current employee name. To get the current employee name, we can use this incoming parameter val. So to this literal text current, let's append the current employee name. Notice now we have the previous and current employee names logged to the console. Since this is the first time our input property value is changing, the previous employee name is null. And every time we click this button, notice the previous and current employee names change accordingly. One very important point to keep in mind is this line which retrieves the name of the previous employee should always be before this line. That's because what is this line doing here? It's updating our private backing field underscore employee with the new value that is coming into our setter. So if this line is after this line of code, then both the previous employee name and current employee name will be same. Let's actually look at this in action. Notice now both the previous and current employee names are the same. Every time we click the button, the same thing happens. So that's why it's very important. This line is before this line. So we have seen two approaches to intercept and react to input property changes. So the obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is what's the difference between these two approaches and when to use one or the other. We'll answer both these questions in our next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.